Are we live? Good morning, Mount Moriah Baptist Church. Please stand to your feet as you are able. The mission of Mont Moriah is to lead souls to Christ, to demonstrate the stand of Christian living, and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The purpose of Mont Moriah Baptist Church is to bring glory to God by obeying Christ's commandments and loving others as Christ loves us. The pulse plan is a crucial measure of the heart rate. Tracking its changes helps monitor a person's health. So it is with our pulse plan that we hope to measure our efforts in the health of our church through five goals. This month of May, we are focusing on empowerment. As we create a ministry that will enlighten, engage, encourage, and energize disciples and neighbors on methods to challenge unfairness, racial discrimination, and economic inequality in the community based on biblical principles. For in calling we are saved. Listen for the wind of the Holy Spirit. For in listening we find new life. Respond to the promises of Christ. For in responding we bring hope to our world. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this Pentecost Sunday. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us life and a passion for seeking that abundant life. Lord, be with us throughout this service. May everything that we do, everything we say, every praise we lift up, every prayer we lift up be pleasing to you. Come now, Holy Spirit, and may your fire touch us in an everlasting way. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Glory to God. Mount Moriah. We send love this morning from the building. I pray that you are blessed and covered, and we are going to yet sing our hymn of the month. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Wherever you are, come on and sing with us. Lift up your voice unto the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Whoa.
are blessed. We are blessed. Your family is blessed. You can talk about how blessed you are. So you ought to come bless the Lord with me where you are. Right there. Come on. Put your hands together, family. Bless the Lord with me. <laughs> Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, He hears you. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hey, come on and bless the Lord with me. What you gotta say? Shout it out. Hallelujah. Come on, shout it out. Praise Him. Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us look to the Lord for just a moment of prayer. O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father God, once again we come before you, dear Lord, with bowed, bowed heads and humble hearts just to say thank you. Thank you, Father, despite all that's going on in the world despite the pandemic and despite the rioting that's going on, dear Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength, dear Lord. We thank you for the trials and tribulations. We thank you, Father, that you are our God and our guide. Lord, we come to lift up the names of those first responders and those who are out on the front lines, dear Lord, in both the battle for the pandemic and the battle for our freedom. We thank you, dear Lord, that we have a place that we call Mount Moriah, dear Lord, a gathering place. Whether we're here physically, dear Lord, we're always here spiritually. 
this place that it's a heartbeat generating love and gratitude. We thank you, Father. We praise you. I stand here and look out, dear Lord, and I can visualize the people in places where they normally sit, dear Lord. And even though they're not physically there, I can still feel them. I see the smiles, dear Lord. I feel the love. It is our prayer, dear Father, that no matter where we are, no matter how we are, what condition we're in, dear Lord, that that love continues to spread. Continue to lift us up, dear Father. Help us to spread that ultimate love, that agape love, dear Lord. Help us love our enemies. Help them understand that we're all the children of one Father. That makes us all brothers and sisters. Father God, we lift up in prayer, dear Lord, those who have lost loved ones, both to this pandemic and just in general, dear Lord, for no one really knows the day or the hour of their departure. Because truly, Lord, we're all traveling on that same level of time to that undiscovered country where no traveler returns, dear Lord. Father, I just want to say once again, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to stand despite it all and because of it all. Because you are God and God alone. We lift up our children, dear Lord. Help them to continue. Yes, they're struggling with their parents because the parents aren't accustomed to teaching. But this is the time, dear Lord, when we can get back to basics. We know that the husbands are getting on the nerves of the wives and the wives getting on the nerves of the husbands. But this is the time for us to remember why they came together in the first place. Father, we praise you and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. Amen. Good morning, Mount Moriah, and those who are watching and listening on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank God and we praise God for another Sunday of worship. And we pray that everything is well with you and your families. This is the Sunday in which we celebrate Pentecost, the arrival of of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem, and as a result of the Holy Spirit, we have guidance and leadership and help in ways we did not have before, and during times like these, uh, we need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to thank you for joining us in worship on today. We realize that we have some regular participants in worship, and we also have some who may be watching us for the first time, some whose faces I have never seen. We want to thank you all for being in our worship in our sanctuary on today. We are blessed by your presence wherever you might be, and again, we ask and pray God's blessings upon you. This is the Sunday in which uh, our youth and children are normally in worship, and uh, we want to uh, thank God for uh, those uh, in our sanctuary, those children and youth who are normally with us uh, that I have not seen uh, physically in a while, and I can't wait to see you 
in Worship Children's Church as well as in Youth Church. And so I pray that our children and youth are doing well. In a few moments, we will take up our morning offering, which also includes our Mount Moriah Baptist Church Scholarship as well as the Edward A. Hale Senior uh, Scholarship Fund. And uh, I am delighted to uh, announce that we have four high school graduates that uh, we are proud of, Julio Bonilla, uh, who I understand may be headed to a community college in uh, the state of California, so he wants to go a long ways from home. Amen. Lindsey Creighton, who is going to attend Clark Atlanta. Uh, Jeremiah Franklin, who uh, will attend Hampton University. And Alicia Musgrove, who is going to attend Virginia State University. Our uh, congratulations to them. And our scholarship fund uh, goes to help them as well as our other uh, college students. And we are praying for uh, you all in the midst of this uh, pandemic as well. Let's keep the family of Pastor Paul Collins in mind. There will be a graveside service for him tomorrow at 2 o'clock in Maryland National. Let's pray for his family, and we lost Deaconess Pauline Gray on Friday. Uh, let's pray for her family as well. Join us for church school via Zoom and uh, Facebook at 930. And please join us for Children's Church at 10 a.m. on today and Youth Church via Zoom at 12 noon. I participated in that on uh, last Sunday, and I enjoyed being in worship with our youth as well. June the 13th, uh, we will have a church school promotion and graduation recognition program via Zoom, and if you have not submitted high school seniors your application uh, for a scholarship, please do so. Um, by June 14th. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds now uh, for the lifting of our morning tithes and offerings. The Bible says that God loves a chill forgiver. At the first of the week, we ought to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse so that there may be meat in God's house. The Bible says, test me, try me, prove me, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing in your life that you will not have room enough to receive it. Mount Moriah, we thank you for the gifts that you have been sending uh, through mail, the offerings that you have been sending uh, via your bank. Thank you for dropping off your tithes and offerings and also uh, giving your tithes and offerings through our internet. Just as a reminder, you can give this morning through PayPal, you can give through Givelify, you can give through the Cash App, you can have your bank to send through Bill Pay uh, to the church, 1636 East Capitol Street, Northeast uh, DC, 2003. You can also mail it to us. Or you can drop it off on today from 9.30 to 11, tomorrow from 2 to 4, and Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So as uh, you uh, write your, your checks, as you go through your devices to give online today, as you do this, let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for your bountiful blessings, and we thank you for even blessing us right now. So many persons are without on today, but you have blessed us in ways we never thought or imagined. We ask and pray that these gifts be pleasing in your sight. Thank you for allowing us to give and allow these monies to be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. And wherever you are, if you're writing your check, you can uh, send it to 
Mount Moriah Baptist Church, 1636 East Capitol Street, Northeast D.C. You can drop it off this morning, 9.30 to 11 on tomorrow from 2 to 4, from twos on Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you have your laptop near you, your desktop, your cell phone, or your tablet, you can go through GiveLify at Mount Moriah Baptist Church. You can go to the Cash App, MT Moriah DC, or you can give through PayPal, Mount Moriah DC. Thank you uh, for your giving on this morning. Come on, family, you know the song we've been singing all month. Goes like so. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank you. bless you. Please stand if you can for our doxology. Glory be to the Father and to to God, everybody. I thought about something this week, the fact that we have moments to only stay close to the Father in our own time, in our own space. And those of us, sometimes we keep forgetting the days just keep moving a little swifter. But we must make sure that we make time with Jesus. Because regardless of what's going on, he's still looking out for you. And you've got to acknowledge that. Anybody want to be drawn closer to the Lord? I know I do. In times like these, because, see, <laughs> I believe God is trying every which way to get our attention right now. And I pray that you will acknowledge and respond.
please never let me go I lay it all down again oh, To hear you say that I'm your friend Spirit, 
have thine own way. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Please stand for the reading of God's word, if you're able to, wherever you are. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 from the New International Version of Scripture to read this way. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to use as a subject this morning, there has been an outbreak. There has been an outbreak. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the day in which many persons term as the birthday of the church. Many also believe that this is the second greatest event in the history of the church, the resurrection of Jesus Christ being the first. Shortly after rising from the dead, Jesus went up to heaven to rejoin God. In the process, God and Jesus sent the Holy Spirit down upon his people so that God might continue to be with us. Pentecost is the day in which Luke, the writer of Acts, records how the Holy Spirit descended upon the church. Now, the reason that Pentecost is so important to the church is that without the Holy Spirit's presence and power, the church would have died a long time ago. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us the anointing to accomplish what is impossible in the flesh. Pentecost is also probably the most misunderstood day in Christendom. Even most of us who have been in church all of our lives don't fully understand the meaning of Pentecost. Many of us call spirit-filled Christians holy rollers. Others call the moving of the Holy Spirit an emotional extremism. Still others say that only Pentecostals believe or behave themselves that way. Being moved by the Holy Spirit is not a denominational issue. As the text says, God poured out his spirit on all flesh. If you profess Christ, you profess the Holy Spirit. That's making all of us Pentecostal by nature. On the Christian calendar, Pentecost occurs seven weeks after Easter. That's because the first Pentecost occurred 50 days after the ascension of Christ. The literal meaning of Pentecost is 50 days. Pentecost is the Hellenistic name of the Hebrew Feast of Weeks. In the Old Testament, the Feast of Weeks was positioned on the Jewish calendar seven weeks after Passover. It was the Jewish Feast of Harvest and is the equivalent to our Thanksgiving. The law stated, the seven full weeks after the Passover, all Jews were to bring their bundles of grain to present before the Lord. On the 50th day, the day after the Sabbath of the seventh week, the Jews were to present to the Lord another new offering of grain. So this is the occasion in which the text is centered on today. 120 persons or more who believed in Christ, gathered together in Jerusalem for this Feast of Weeks. Jews from all over antiquity or the biblical world gathered, and while gathered, they experienced something that transcended the Christian faith. This Pentecost experience was the beginning of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit as we know it. 
after Pentecost, these believers had a power they never had before. This was not the first time they had experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had been around ever since the creation of the world. But this was the first time that these believers became conscious, aware of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent so that they may have the power to further proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit descended on them, and as a result, they were to tell others about the saving power of Jesus Christ. The day of Pentecost marks the day in which believers were to begin their missionary work, the work of bringing the lost unto Christ. An outbreak had taken place. An outbreak is a sudden breaking out or occurrence and eruption. Sounds like our country today, doesn't it? We are in the midst of two outbreaks in our country, and our country has erupted. One outbreak being the coronavirus, and the second outbreak being these protests and riots over the unnecessary murder of George Floyd. An outbreak of COVID-19 hit our country two months ago, and for the last two months we have been sheltering in place. Till Friday, we basically had to stay at home. We could only do the bare essentials. Over 100,000 lives have been lost. Millions have been infected by disease, and only the Lord knows how many of us are asymptomatic. We all know someone who has been affected by this disease, as well as someone who has passed because of it. It somehow or another hangs around, blows in the wind, lands itself on whoever it wishes. Speaking, singing, shaking of hands, hugging are all super spreaders of the disease. I never thought that I would have to wear a mask when going out and standing six feet apart from the person in line in front of me as an attempt to prevent the spread of disease. I never thought that there would be a time in which the people of God would not be allowed to come into the sanctuary. Never thought that there would be a time in which restaurants were closed, schools and universities were also working from home rather than going to work would be the norm. Loved ones will be prevented from going to the hospital to see their sick and dying. The unemployment rate will be higher today than it was during the Great Depression. The people would be so stressed out, all because an outbreak of COVID-19 has taken place. Then to add to this, the senseless murders of Alton Sterling and George Floyd. We all have seen and heard numerous times the vicious video of a white police officer in Minneapolis placing his knee into the neck of George Floyd, a black man, for eight minutes, despite already being on the ground of a city sidewalk, handcuffed, calling for his mama and yelling, I can't breathe. In the last two minutes plus, there was no pulse coming from George Floyd's body. And yet this police officer did not remove his knee from Mr. Floyd's neck, nor did the other three police officers ask or force him to do so. Because of George Floyd's death, an outbreak of peaceful protests, and even riots have taken place all over this country. In Minneapolis, Boston, New York City, Atlanta, Richmond, L.A., Dallas, Houston, Louisville, Detroit, Chicago, Bakersville, Columbus, Des Moines, Denver, Memphis, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Jose, San Francisco, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., and so many cities I did not name. Thirteen states have called the National Guard to protect cities. For two months in America, because of the coronavirus, it's been extremely difficult to breathe. And now this death of George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, has just taken those in these cities over the top. We're living in a day and time in which history will record and we will never forget. There is an outbreak taking place right now in our midst. 
a sudden breaking out or occurrence. An eruption is taking place in our country. And the Holy Spirit is what is needed in this day and time to help us to survive the outbreaks that we are experiencing today. How can the Holy Spirit help us in times such as these? First, the Holy Spirit moves wherever it wishes. Luke the writer says in verses 2 and 3, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. It is the day of Pentecost, and the believers were together in one place. The disciples and other believers, 120 in all from all over the Roman Empire, as well as the biblical world, gathered for the Jewish Feast of Weeks. The apostles and these 120 believers were gathered in one place. They were either gathered in this temple where they gathered at public times or they were in their own upper room where they met at other times. Where they were assembled, we do not know. However, we do know they were gathered in Jerusalem. They were gathered together in one accord. All of a sudden, there was a noise from the sky. This noise sounds like a strong blowing wind. Winds usually rise gradually, but this one, Luke says, comes suddenly. This wind was at its highest height in no time at all. Luke further describes this wind as a mighty rushing wind. It was strong and violent. It came not only with a great noise, but it also came with great force. This wind, which was such a great force and so strong, filled the whole house. Not just one room, but it filled every room in the house. These persons gathered together on one accord, saw something strange, something that was undoubtedly beyond the bounds of imagination, something miraculous and inscrutable. Many scholars believe that what they saw was a visible sign of what they were to receive. The only way Luke could explain it was that it looked like tongues of fire spread out touching the persons gathered there. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit moves wherever it wishes. These peaceful protests all across America in the last two or three days have just come out of nowhere. They have happened suddenly with a strong and great force. The death of George Floyd has filled all of our hearts. These peaceful protests have been beyond the bounds of our imagination. They have been sort of a miracle, inscrutable, and even strange. That's how the Holy Spirit works. I want to suggest to you, and you think about it, that these peaceful protests that are taking place all across this country are the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can't come until persons are on one accord. Persons who are protesting peacefully have come together on one accord. The Holy Spirit has gotten into their hearts and minds of those who are protesting peacefully. The Holy Spirit comes in ways uncontrollable to us. The Holy Spirit sometimes comes in a manner that causes us to do things that we would not ordinarily do. Things beyond our control in ways we never thought or imagined. America will never be on one accord until the Holy Spirit takes residence in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. This church or anywhere else has to come on one accord in order for the Holy Spirit to come into our midst. When the Holy Spirit comes, it touches one person, but by the time the Holy Spirit finishes its work, it has filled the whole room. Grandmama said it moves from heart to heart and from breast to breast it's as if a wind is blowing, as if the whole house has caught on fire, as if something uncontrollable has hit. It might cause you to dance, to clap, to run, to shout, to speak in tongues, to help someone, to speak a kind word, to give an impression of love. It may cause you to go and ask your enemy for forgiveness and it might even cause you to engage in peaceful protests. It might not cause you to do anything, but have a good feeling on the inside. 
The point I'm trying to make is that when the Holy Spirit hits, it hits in an uncontrollable manner. We don't know when it's going to happen. Don't know how it's going to happen. Don't know where it's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is uncontrollable when we come together on one accord. The writer says, it's just like fire shut up in my bones. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is designed to give us as Christians the power to do things we would not ordinarily be able to do. Luke says in verse 4, And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Luke goes on to explain this in verses 5 through 11. There were Jewish devout religious persons living in Jerusalem whose origins were from every country of the biblical world. The Bible says that when they heard this noise, all of those gathered, it created a large crowd. When they got there, they became excited. The reason for their excitement was that they heard believers speaking in their own languages. They were amazed because the persons who they saw speaking were Galileans. And yet every last one of them heard these Galileans speak in their own languages, even though the person speaking did not know their neighbor's language. So they say in verse 8, this then is how it is that each of our hearts hear them in their own language. These people were from Parthia, Media, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontius and Asia, from Persia and from Philia, from Egypt in Africa, from Libya near Cyrene, which is also in Africa. Some of them were Jews and others were Gentiles who had converted to Jerusalem, to Judaism. Some were from Crete and Arabia. They were not from Jerusalem, yet they say at the end of verse 11, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own language. The point that I want to make is that the Holy Spirit came on this day called Pentecost, enabled them to speak in tongues they would not have ordinarily spoken in. And I want to suggest to you that the Holy Spirit empowers us to do things that we would not ordinarily have the power to do. I know that it's hard not worrying during these times. If we were honest, these are trying times. If we were honest with ourselves, we would admit that we cannot stand our ground by ourselves. We are too weak, too fragile, too easily broken. To protest peacefully, to handle this predicament, we need the power in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what we need to deal with times such as these. The mistake is that we attempt to do things on our own. That's what these riots are doing. Persons are trying to speak for themselves, trying to handle that which we are going through, trying to be their own defense, their own lawyer. Rioting and looting takes the Holy Spirit out of the situation. But I stop by here to tell someone to stop trying to deal with times like these on your own. Let the Holy Spirit be your defense. Let the Holy Spirit be in control of your situation. Let the Holy Spirit be your lawyer. Don't try to fight on your own. You will fail every time. Let the Holy Spirit be your utterance. Don't respond without the Holy Spirit giving you the response. Be led by the Holy Spirit in every situation. Make sure it is not you, but it is the Holy Spirit that is speaking. Let the Holy Spirit speak for you and not you for yourself you don't speak let the Holy Spirit speak every time I speak I make a mess but when I allow the Holy Spirit to speak for me things turn out so much better let the Holy Spirit give you utterance for the Holy Spirit is our source of power next the text teaches us that there are some folk who don't understand what the Holy Spirit is all about in other words there are some folk who are just scared of what the Holy Spirit can do and what the Holy Spirit is. Luke tells us the reactions of those who heard their native tongues being spoken. They in their amazement and wonderment say in verse 12, what does this mean? Then verse 13 says, but others made fun of the believers saying these people are drunk. The persons who were present 
did not understand what was going on. And because they did not understand what was going on, they began to ask questions. They say, what does this mean? Others could not explain what was going on. So they began to come to the wrong conclusion. They said these people are drunk. They are filled with new wine. Peter stands up and he begins to speak. He says, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me. And let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only 9 o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even on my servant, both men and women, I will pour out your spirit in these days and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day the Lord comes. They were drunk, but they were not drunk as the people supposed. They were surely intoxicated, but they were intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. There are many folk who do not understand the Holy Spirit. There are some folk who are actually scared of the Holy Spirit. There are some folk who believe that if you don't clap your hands, say amen, and dance and run around the church, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Persons who think like this really don't understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that, but the Holy Spirit is so much more. And for those folk who think that you don't need all of that stuff, you are dead wrong. Lord knows when you have some noise in the sanctuary and some amens, it makes a world of difference. But we can't confine the Holy Spirit to these methods. The Holy Spirit is so much more. The Holy Spirit is that which guides us, teaches us, leads us, and directs us. To feed the hungry, visit the sick, clothe the naked, take care of the captives. That's having the Holy Spirit. Looking out for the oppressed, the marginalized, the vulnerable, the least of these. That's the Holy Spirit. When you speak words of knowledge, that's the Holy Spirit. When you have peace, that's the Holy Spirit. And even when you protest in peace, that's the Holy Spirit. We need to stop trying to confine the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot be confined just to the church. We see that now. We are not, you are not in the sanctuary this morning, but the Holy Spirit is still moving. We need to let the Spirit have its own way. We need to stop being scared of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the vehicle that God sent to be the intercessor between God and us. Let the Holy Spirit have its way wherever it needs to go. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Finally, Luke says, or tells us that the reason why the Holy Spirit appeared at the festival of weeks, which after this text called Pentecost. According to Luke, the Holy Spirit appeared at Pentecost so that the church may have the power to witness to the entire world. Luke says in verse 21, And then whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here in Acts, the Holy Spirit is the power to witness. The Holy Spirit is the engine that drives the church into the entire world. The Holy Spirit, according to Luke, is the power that the church uses to bring men, women, boys, and girls to salvation. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. On yesterday, I saw a post on Facebook by our own trustee, Donna Wise, which said, and I quote, on my way downtown for the protests in front of the Justice Department. Black Lives Matter. Meet me there. Later on in the day, I saw at least four clips that Sister Wise posted of the peaceful protest that was taking place. For me, this was a form of witness. A Christian can engage in a peaceful protest. And that Christian used her phone to witness to the world that protest is necessary and protest can be peaceful. Let me just say, having said it in this sermon, there are four more, far more people 
who want to engage in peaceful protests than those who want to riot and loot. Peaceful protests are of the Holy Spirit. Riots are of the enemy. Yet we have to understand whether right or wrong, why persons riot, loot, and burn. For many, it is a sense of power that they would not ordinarily have. The right to protest is a First Amendment right and the oppressed, the poor, the marginalized people of color, those who deal with isms every day will continue to do so until those who are privileged decide to share their power and their wealth. Trustee Wise shared, shared her witness with the world. Thank you, Trustee Wise, for your witness. And it is the way with us as Christians. When it comes to the goodness of Jesus, we should want to keep it to ourselves. We should want to tell everyone, especially the lost, about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Peter says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the reason why the Holy Spirit came is so that all might be saved. God poured God's Spirit on sons and daughters so that they could proclaim the word of God. So that all might be saved. God poured out his spirit so that young men might see visions. So that all might be saved. And God poured out God's spirit on old men so that they might have dreams. So that all might be saved. God poured out his spirit so that miracles could be performed. So that all might be saved. We, even during this time, are called to be witness. To tell somebody that Jesus saved us. To tell somebody that Jesus delivered us. To tell somebody that Jesus performed a miracle in our lives. To tell somebody that since we met Jesus, we are no longer the same that Jesus picked us up, turned us around, and placed our feet on solid ground. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to the entire world. That's why we need the Holy Spirit on today. We need salvation saved from the coronavirus, saved from police brutality, saved from disease, despair, from the attacks from the enemy. And it is my prayer that there will be an outbreak in this country of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that America will catch the Holy Spirit that you and I will catch the Holy Spirit that you and I will come spiritually intoxicated under the influence of the Holy Spirit inebriated by the Holy Ghost. My power is that the Holy Spirit will intoxicate us because when the Holy Spirit comes things will get better. Things will change mindsets, will change laws and policies will change so spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Mold us, melt us, fix us, change us. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on us. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you for this day in which we celebrate Pentecost. And as those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, we ask and pray that you would help us to take the Holy Spirit wherever we go, to speak up, to encourage, to protest peacefully, to show others the goodness of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, during this time, move in our lives in ways we never thought or imagined. We give you the okay to move in us, to encourage us, to lead us in the way that you would have for us to go. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Let the people of God say amen. If you're able, please stand to your feet. As we conclude our worship on today, we want everyone to be given God's plan of salvation. Once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you are given at least one spiritual gift. But even before that, you are given, you have received the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want you to have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. It all starts with salvation. 
The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be, will be saved. If you're looking for salvation on today, repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. I receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, do in my life whatever you want to do. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved on today. And you have received the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Congratulations. Welcome to God's plan of salvation. And you now have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want to hear about your decision. If you have accepted Christ on today and received the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, we ask and pray that you would call our church, 202-544-5588, 202-544-5588, and leave a message in the church administrator's box, and we will get back with you. Or you can send us an email, M-T-M-O-R-I-A-H, at MountMariahChurch.org, spelled out. You can send us an email with your name and your address and a phone number so that we might get back with you. Or you can let us know on one of our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just send us a note to let us know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life on today, and you have received the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the sanctuary real soon. If you another thing you can do, if you want to text 31996, 31996, and type newbie, N-E-W-B-I-E, hit send, you will receive a discipleship form. That discipleship form will enable you to fill it out and send it back to us with information letting us know that you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. 31996, you can text, write newbie, hit send, a discipleship form will be sent to you. You can fill it out, get that information back to us, and we will get back with you as soon as possible. Welcome to the family of Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power Break every chain. 
Let's place God's benediction upon our service on today. Now unto the one who leads us, guides us, and directs us. Unto the one who is able to move in ways we never thought or imagined. To the one who gives us power and peace. To you, Holy Spirit, we give honor. We give praise and we give glory. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks that the people of God say amen. Come on, let's sing some more of that. Let's break every chain. Oh, we're not going to sing that? Yeah, let's sing break every chain. Whoa, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name Jesus, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army. Break every chain. Break every chain.